Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen. Today we're super excited to have back for number five, as I just found out, times we've had McCain's in. So welcome McCain's to our virtual kitchen. Thank you. Morning, Jay. How are you? Great. So we, we got like multi cameras going on again. So we got to make we do. sure. We're rocking it. So yeah. Summer, do you want to kind of open up what we're going to be talking yeah. about today on our virtual yeah. kitchen? So today we're going to talk about um, several different strategies that are going to help you weather the storm or help us all weather the storm through um, through this COVID epi epidemic. Um, there's four different topics that we'll walk through. Um, the first is going to be about small agile menus and LTOs. So keeping it simple, figuring out, um, you know, how to maximize your menu um, to get the most profit out of it. And so all indicators for 2021 say that this is going to be um, small agile menus are the way it's going to be. Um, a lot of operators um, have probably thought about reducing their menu to keep it simple and haven't done that. And now COVID has pretty much given us permission to cut the fat, um, cut the things that aren't really working for us and aren't producing um, the rest uh, the the margin that we're looking for. And so really everything on your on the menu should um, punch above its weight. Um, it needs to have a high um, a contribution margin. Um, and with that said, um, it should really honestly leverage multiple SKUs that you already have in your pantry or freezer. So instead of adding new items or incremental items, it's about really using the items that are super um, flexible and versatile and work with multiple things on your menu. And so um, and what we're seeing is that through uh, technomic menu trends, most operators in Q uh, in Q2, there was a reduction in menu item count by 23%. And then in Q3, it was down an additional 11%. So you can wow. see there's a lot of, yeah, sorry, talking fast. But, no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I get excited. Um, so yeah, so, so heavy reduction in menu items. But um, that doesn't mean that... Um, we need to be considering like LTOs and how to promote the items that you currently have, um, making different combinations, getting creative with it. So it's really an opportunity for operators to think creatively about really what's working, um, what's not working, and then really make the most out of it. So Chef, I know you have um, a few ideas here or examples of this that we've seen um, from other operators. Yeah, exactly, Summer. So we'll, you know, we'll talk about a couple of things, but first I want to give a shout out to uh, Chef Ron, who's on the fryer and the uh, oven and the broiler today, and then Chef Mark is our roving camera. So for those of you that have seen the McCain shows before, we kind of rotate around the, the chef on cam duties. So, um, so you know, it takes a village to, to pull all this together, right, Jay? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so Summer, to your point, um, you know, we recently heard about one of the large family dining chains that's known for its pancakes that has literally downsized their menu from 12 pages to two. And so that's really enabled them to focus on their brand, to consolidate SKUs, and to place emphasis on versatility for every item that comes in the back door. Uh, this also helps with supply chain, anxiety, supply chain anxiety, which we know is one of those things that kind of pops up, you know, even eight, nine months into uh, the, the pandemic, right? Uh, it also helps with employee training, whether that's bringing in new hires or maybe you're bringing back employees that need to be refreshed on a, you know, on a scaled down menu that they weren't familiar with, you know, when they when they might have been, uh, you know, laid off for a little while. So, um, so all those things kind of, you know, factor into making it uh, make it smaller and making it tighter. Um, and then speaking of menus, um, it looks like maybe printing costs are, are one of those things that you can take off of your, uh, your of your GNA list because so many places are now using QR codes or digital menus that are like maybe right mm -hmm. on the tabletop. So mm -hmm. um, think about how quickly. I mean, I remember as an operator having to go in and type up the specials every day and print those off or whatever. Think about how quickly you can update those things if it's all digitally held now. Uh, so then you can really adapt quickly. Uh, to maybe you know supply chain challenges or whatever, and so then that just makes adaptability and agility like watchwords for uh, for the new year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so once we get our menus at peak performance. Um, really, it's about promoting the heck out of it. So whether you're promoting through regular holidays like New Year's or Christmas or things like that, or you're making up your own occasion. So these could be things like Taco Tuesday or Netflix binge worthy Friday, and you're creating kind of your binge menu to help people go out and, uh, and enjoy their Netflix watching. Um, these are things that you can do to help promote some of those items. So what you'll do is, or what you want to think about is how can you customize or 
rotate or change out some of the stuff that you're doing and the ingredients that you're using into the different combinations to support these sort of occasions that uh, drives that traffic and our interest from their operators um, or interest from consumers. Um, so one of the things we say is that is that really every case that comes into your operation um, should should be able to um, be uh, included in at least two to three different uh, menu items or have th two to three different purposes when you're thinking about how to put together your your LTOs or your um, specialty items. Yeah, so similar to that point, um, well, the first item we're going to show is uh, our skillet, uh, the, C the Cisco skillet hash brown cube. So you think, oh, hash brown cube, it's breakfast. I can put it with eggs. I can maybe put it in a stir fry or whatever. But um, you kind of mentioned a special occasion, and, and you forgot to say your your idea of binge and binge, right? So net for Netflix <laughs> binge and then binge eating at the same time. So that binge and binge. And I said, I, I hope that you've registered that domain uh, already. Um, but so whether it's uh, an actual holiday or an event or like a, a made up a made up holiday or a made up occasion so like taco tuesdays here's where that uh that skillet uh hash brown dice could work in uh for taco tuesday right so so flip it over to the evening so we've got our um our flour tortillas here we're going to put a little chorizo in the bottom as a base and so uh you know in classic latin cuisine uh, potatoes are an inexpensive filler, and so that shows up in a lot of tacos. It's just not something that we might think about as a normal operator. So we'll put some of those uh, those nice skillet dice like right in there. So now we've got a good bit of you know, we've got some protein. We've got a nice filling. Um, you know, so, so we're going to see satiety from the potatoes there as well, and then top it off with my uh, my traditional toppings with uh, a little bit of shredded cabbage. And then you know, we're freshening it up with a little bit of salsa. We've got uh, just to give it a little bit of moisture. This could be you know your own in-house version or a prepared one. And then a little bit of spicy mayonnaise just to give it a kick. And then a little something green on top with some, some cilantro to give it some pop. And that's going to be a nice way to use. Here's something, you know, off of our breakfast day part. And we're going to pull that into our uh, Taco Tuesday or uh, uh, other time parts. So put this over here and Chef Mark's going to get a close-up shot on that. Now, Summer, I'm going to ask you a question, maybe Chef sure. as well. Is product ideas like this, because I think we're also going to be up as we see menu reductions happening, 24% mm -hmm. if I'm doing my math right here into Q3. Sure is because first of all one with our teams our business resource teams across canada prior to COVID, we were talking about menu reduction already like the amount sure. of size that people had and we saw that a lot in qsrs we saw that a lot of operations right. explore menus and having the ability to switch them up all the time um where do you when we reduce that we're also reducing higher priced items or are we re, are we focused on a little taking a little yeah. bit of each area, because I think there's going to have to be a very, uh, I guess, good selection of very price sensitive products like this idea is here, beautiful, but it's yeah. going to cost an operator very little to have this, but the guest is getting great experience. Is that, is that something also we're going to be aware of? Yeah. I mean, I think you need to consider that. Um, honestly, it's really for us focused on margin and Chef Brook, you could probably say more to this than I than I even but like, um, really, it, if, the, if the if the product is a signature item, and maybe it costs you a little bit more to pay for that product, but yet, you know that your consumers are going to be out there buying it. And it's something that you're known for, I wouldn't say like that, that that should be something that you would to take away. However, if you can balance that, you know, margin where you're, you know, it, it is a lower cost item and you can charge more for it, obviously those are the things that we want to consider. So I think it's a balance. Um, you know, some of the, you know, value added items or things that we produce like coated fries, right? Those are going to cost you a little bit more than maybe a conventional fry, but, but, you know, they, they perform better in delivery and that kind of thing. And you can charge more to your consumer. So, so there's things that I think that you need to balance overall on the whole um, profitability piece there. Um, but really it's about those items that are, that are working the hardest that can deliver them the most variety um, and customization for a consumer without uh, overloading your pantry or your freezer. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it also is on volume. 
I think volume, yeah. if you're going to make a right. little less margin, but you're going to be pushing more products. Sure. To, True. To, because we used to say back in the day where a lot of restaurants were able to have foot traffic, we got to keep the traffic going through the restaurant, right? You got to keep yep. going. I think the same goes. Turntables. Yeah, yeah. Turntables flip, you know, you got to get traffic in there. I think mm -hmm. that I believe it's the same thing with your wow. takeout and your delivery. Grab is, that. Um, if you're going to make a little less, thing right there. the traffic going. There. Sure. Exactly. I mean, it's really so, and that's where the interest comes in, or where the the promoting and thinking about those um, occasions or events. I think we're all kind of um, longing for that connection and that point. I think you and I talked about this a little bit before this started, right? Which is how do we create those connections or those events or those times where we can kind of get together? And so, um, thinking about promotional activity that normally would have been on premise, but now turning it into kind of an off premise experience, I think is another way that you can build that traffic and get people to look forward to every Tuesday I'm getting tacos or every, you know, yeah. every Friday I'm going to have my binge and binge night. And so I know where I'm going to go to get that, that, that menu idea that I love. Yeah. You know what I've also seen recently is a lot of uh, restaurants are working on subscription programs. Yep. So subscribe to our Tuesday, you know, Taco Tuesday and be a part every week. We'll see you here and creating mm -hmm. that, uh, the community in a sense within this subscribing to those different meal days or ideas, right? There's lots you can do in sure. that area. Sure. Anyways, back over to Chef. Now that's all That's all good things and I'm not gonna steal my own thunder because Jay, I've got uh, an example I'll show a little bit later that'll kind of hit on that too. So um, another thing about, uh, so versatility, um, we've got our spicy Cisco um, wedges here. And so we're going to use, uh, and some things I'll show in to-go packaging as well too, because that's still, uh, you know, still a reality. I'm going to show some of this, but for a dine in, you know, this uh, kind of rusted cast iron skillet. And then these are going to be uh, loaded al pastor wedges. So a little bit of uh, already, it's our, our it's our already prepared um, al pastor. We've got a little bit of caramelized onion, so we're just going to heat that through. And this and is stuff that also, Jeff, you could you could do this in a meal kit from your restaurant. As exactly. Well, right? Yep. Yep. And we'll have a we'll have a, some of those ideas uh, here in a bit too. So, um, yeah, I love that idea about uh, and here's some uh, some grilled pineapple to give it that citrus notes and uh, bring a little bit more smoky flavors in there as well. But I love that idea about uh, you know subscriptions from your favorite restaurant. So, mm -hmm. operator, just just goes to show operators are reinventing yeah. themselves every day. So. Yeah. And even as you think about subscription service, if you have partner restaurants in the area, I mean, this could create variety for your operator or for the yep. consumer, right? And you guys can all benefit from, from sales that way. Well, I yep. think the demand for the competitiveness in delivery and third-party delivery is enormous right now. Like, it, mm -hmm. And it's very competitive. How do you stand out, right? Like what makes you different than the other 12 I can you know, flip on my phone with my thumb and find sure. a different one, right? And uh, creating something unique, I think, is going to still yeah. be very important as we move forward into the spring. Right. And how you package it and how you deconstruct it to, to make sure that restaurant eating experience happens when you when you get it home. Right. Yeah. Yes. I think it, I, 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 in a way, I think the uniqueness will be that experience um, over the product a little bit. Right. Like sure. We're going to be. And I'm hoping everyone eats out tons now from all our restaurants. That's what we want sure. um, out there supporting our industry. But we also need to create that uniqueness so there is an interest level to that. And, and it's difficult in a virtual world. Um, definitely. I think that's where, you know, social media and your email marketing and stuff obviously come into play. There's a lot of people going to be monitoring that, hopefully. Um, a lot of the times actually now, you know, with third party delivery, I think because, you know, people are starting to see like, or, or just have their, their set restaurants. Um, I think we're seeing some, some consumers going directly to the restaurant too. So leveraging your website to make sure your website is promoting these type of items too, um, I think is, is a, is a great way to make sure you're promoting and getting your word out. Looks so great, on, the, on the screen, we're seeing those al pastor fries. So, you know, really nice colors, a lot of different flavors and such. Uh, even as a dish, because uh, you said meal kit, but even as a dish that's like fully finished, this could transport well. And you kind of get that, you know, a little bit of the potato is going to break down in transit or whatever, but it's still going to be a really good dish. And it could be reheatable at home, whether that's a quick pop into the oven or microwave. Uh, it's not going to suffer dramatically. You're still going to 
it's going to deliver on all those flavors and such. So, so do you want an idea? I have an idea. You gave me an idea, chef. So this is what I would do. And, and trust me, it's probably unfeasible, but maybe. So for an X amount of dollars to subscribe to my breakfast Sunday dinners, I will give you that frying pan. Oh yeah. Right? With my logo on it or, yeah. you know what? Cool. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how I would do that in a sense. And it, and put it into the dollar amount. So it's an extra 40 bucks or whatever for sure. a nice cast iron. But every Sunday you get to view my cooking with me in my mm -hmm. restaurant. I'm um, great breakfast ideas using the skillet that you bought from us. Yep. Right? That's cool. Yep. Very well, cool. That's what I would do just to create that fun and en engaging. Cause I think going through the winter months over the next few months, entertainment and engagement is going to be critical for our operators. Well, and in, in truth, yep. if you could break it down to say, Hey, listen, the subscription service is going to last for the next six months. And every, you know, Tuesday, I'm going to send you this a meal here. I'm going to throw in even for free, like this cast iron skillet that you basically work into those, you know, six months of meals, you know, as like a portion, um, it would cut back even the $40 fee. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and consumers wouldn't feel it. And they're just feeling like they're getting something cool yeah, um, from then, the restaurant. Yeah. In their order, they get a frying pan in it. And yeah cool something fun drink. they know how to reheat their food now and every you know every meal that goes out it comes with um you know kind of heat reheating instructions to put into the skillet and that kind of thing so that's a cool idea awesome stuff cool so, th so thinking about um uh so we, we kind of moved past taco tuesday which is like you know a made up occasion if you will but we do actually have some real holidays coming up so of course christmas is not too far away uh if you haven't you know so, so how many shopping days left there <laughs> <laughs> um and then of course there's new year's eve which is always huge for the restaurant industry right well um maybe more importantly for uh, a delivery uh, opportunity is new year's day right so what better than hangover fries to you know help with the <laughs> hair of the dog that bit you so we're going to uh use those same wedges that you know you might have been serving uh the night before or the day before and then um you know we're going to add a couple of uh, key ingredients to that and, and that's going to be set up as a delivery item because who wants to have to go out on uh on that day right you want that you want that stuff to come to you <laughs> for well, sure Summer, there was a thing, there's a comment here from Ben, um, and he makes a really good point. And I was thinking about this even this morning. Ben and me are on the same path here. Um, is customers can do all this, but it is very important that you have your social media and your website ready yeah. to do these things as well, right? Because sure. yeah. going out and doing them without kind of that plan, and I think that is in a sense, some of this closures that we're seeing right now and some of these unfortunate dine in where you can't, and you may not be as busy. Yeah. It might be time to beef up your social presence right now and beef yeah. up your websites to handle, you know, a New Year's day meal yeah. or a, a New Year's Eve meal or just, yeah. I think that's so important, Ben. Thank you for that because yeah. all these ideas are great, but if your social presence and your website just isn't there, it will deter people from ordering from you. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of operators, right, right would um, lean on their on-premise to be able to, del like, communicate that, right? You have your regular people who come in all the time and that kind of thing. And so, um, and so, you know, um, unfortunately, there are some that just didn't prioritize social media or, you know, their, mm -hmm. their communications with their, you know, their consumers and email marketing and things like that. And so, so yeah, I mean, keeping your website up to date, making sure that your website can handle promotional elements. Um, you know, it's, you know, I know some, for some people, social media seems really daunting doing, you know, Facebook and Instagram, I would say, you know, um, leaning into Instagram is probably the one that we're seeing is is used the most. Um, so, so if you had to pick one, I would say picking that. Um, Facebook is also, you know, one, the other one, depending on who your target audience is. So, so that kind of thing. Um, and we're seeing more and more people using delivery services, obviously. So it used to be more of a younger generation now. So now you're kind of getting a spread. So so really Facebook and Instagram would be the two that I would say, um, you know, at least get your message out there and your your story. Um, pretty easy to set up. Yeah, and, I think and, it's important. It's a really good point. And yeah. surprisingly, and I'm proud of this, is Cisco has these resources that help our customers Perfect. and help the industry out. Yeah. We can help you with your websites. We can, we've got... Yeah. 
other companies we work with that are experts in this area that you just partner with them and they'll make you rock stars in the virtual world. Yeah. Um, on your websites and your social media, uh, we work close with Order Ease on that. And uh, we've got so many resources to help in this area. That's excellent. It is something that we really need to make sure people are set up sure. with good, I, good presence. Yeah, I will say with our promotional suggestions and stuff that we do, we also have a service that helps with, you know, creating advertisements or customizing ads and stuff like that. So, so certainly um, we've made it a priority for us. We used to focus more on on-premise materials like table tents and menu inserts, but now um, are starting to incorporate a lot more social advertising and, and custom um, customizable advertisements for operators to use. So chef, Looks delicious. My, my, yeah, who wouldn't want that to show up? Who wouldn't want that to show up on their doorstep on New Year's Day, right? You've got yes. a nice beefy gravy over those spicy wedges. Um, you know, there's a nicely fried egg on top there, and then some cheddar cheese. So it's a little bit of put in a little bit of the dog that bit you um, kind of thing. And then uh, you know, all you have to do is uh, pick up your phone to to get it to your house, if you will. And you know what? The, well, the nice thing too low cost for the operator to create sure. this, right? Yep. Uh, love that idea and very well played. Exactly. So. And it is something also that, um, like you said, you got to, I think, and this is the interesting point you made me think here is you have to have a very fluid menu. And that's where you were saying earlier, Chef, is that you can switch them up now. They're virtual, either in your restaurant if you still dine in, or if they're online, you can flip them all the time now. And I think, I think that's a really good point because you may have this for New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, you know, it might be different the next day. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Great and again, so, you know, here, here is a, you know, Latin inspired version with those spicy wedges. And now here's something that's going to help, you know, cure your hangover on, uh, after a little <laughs> bit too. And, and who, and who says you only have to serve those on, uh, um, you know, New Year's Day. Maybe it's uh, net. It's it's your binge and binge the night before, and then the next day you're ordering the hangover fries. So, so, so then, kind of keeping along those same lines of uh, of holidays and such, jumping forward a little bit to uh, to St. Patrick's Day. So, Jay, you said meal kits. Here's like a really cool idea for um, a meal kit, and this is one of the first uh, first things that we'll show here with our um, fresh fried chips. So, fresh this up. is our yeah. Before we get to that, can we run a quick commercial and we'll be right oh, yeah. back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be right back with Chef. After these messages. Okay. <laughs> As your valued and trusted business partner, we understand that you need the freedom and flexibility to choose the way you want to order. Cisco Source allows you to order what you need, when you need it, on any device. Here's how it works. Select the order button and click on New. Choose to place your order with a customized order guide or with your order history. Click on a product and voila. All the product information that is most important to you is right at your fingertips. Find product photos, benefits, and nutritional facts, and more. Enter the exact quantity you need, then click Preview to review your order. Click Submit, and your order is instantly sent to Cisco. With Cisco's industry-leading technology, you can get real-time updates with everything happening with your orders. See your invoices and credit memos all from one place. The Source app has everything you need to easily manage all of your inventory product in the palm of your hand. And when you're ready, click Preview to review your total inventory value. Click Close Inventory to complete the work. So what are you waiting for? Start searching for product, placing an order, and managing your inventory wherever you are. Download the Source app. Cisco Source, start placing your orders with ease and confidence today. Oh, welcome back. Go, yep. So, Jay, you were talking about meal kits earlier. So here's the perfect example, not only of our, one of our versatile items, but the way to kind of break it out and, and set it up as a meal kit. So our fresh fried potato chip, which is a sliced russet that we uh, quickly fry and then and then chill and freeze. Um, the chef Mark, if you can get those, that's perfect. So you, chef, you said chill and freeze? Yep. So we, so we cool them down and then we freeze them. So when it comes to the operator, it's just that one final fry. Um, the great thing about these, and here's a close-up shot of the entire bowl, these will hold all day. These might even hold two days, depending on the humidity, time of year, so forth and so on. And then we'll talk about some special seasonings here in a few minutes. But this is one of my favorite products um, that we have. But so in things, in terms of a of a meal kit, so you know, have those chips already cooked up, and then for an Irish nachos dish for St. Patrick's Day, then you can pre-bag these chips. Those go along in the either the meal kit or the delivery bag, whatever the case may be, or you know at the pickup the pickup station, and then 
you know, those are their own, those are their own little item, right? So in the meal kit, then you've got all the traditional items that you would have in a nachos. So this could be chill, this could be set warm. So you've got blistered jalapenos, tomatoes, bacon, onions, green onions, and then cheese sauce. Whether that gets popped into the microwave, uh, you know, when the when the consumer gets at home or wherever they're eating, or, or whether that's hot, then it just goes on top. So I think that's probably one of the the key things about the the pandemic is that we're all accustomed now to finishing off or refinishing things you know, once they come into our house and once they come into our kitchen. So, um, so that's versatility one on this fresh fry, uh, fresh fry chip, and that'll come back around again later on. So, Summer, I know that you wanted to kind of talk about uh, exclusivity uh, as kind yeah. of our kind of turning the corner to our next uh, our next key item, yeah. right? And that one actually fits for that too. The cool part about that one is you can also uh, prepare it ahead of time. So it takes away some of the labor, right? Like you get it all together, you package it together. Um, but anyway, as far as uh, driving exclusivity and immediacy, um, uh, this is where FOMO is at its finest. So if you don't, for those of you who don't know what FOMO is, it's uh, fear of missing out. And, and it really taps into um, our nature as a risk adverse species, right? And so we want to latch on to every opportunity to the point that most of us will go ahead and make some sort of, um, you know, um, impulse purchase um, to make sure that we uh, have won't regret not activating against something uh, versus um, versus waiting and, and letting the opportunity go. Right. So it's better to regret something that we have done than we haven't. And so this can apply and we can tap into the to our um, consumers nature this way um, and promote our menu um, the same exact way. So as you're thinking about your daily or weekly specials, um, this could be done in terms of, as you're talking about how you're promoting it, um, that kind of thing, this could be things like giving a time period, right? So act now between the hours of six and eight and, and you know get a deal or it could be while supplies last so i know um in you know where i live this has happened in a couple of the restaurants that we are on you know on a newsletter with and essentially they have so many you know prime rib dinners for your family and and once they're gone they're gone and so um taking care of it or doing this so even those nachos right which seemed like super easy to put together maybe you only have so many of them and they you know they go out the door um as as you need to now, is, if a consumer misses out on it, um, the cool, cool part about that is that they're going to be more likely to pay attention to you and the new items and the cool um, uh, recipes that you have um, to make sure that they, they don't miss out the next time. So they become newsworthy, they become talk worthy, um, things like that. So um, Chef, where have you seen this? Uh, I know you have some examples of how this has been done really well. Yeah, you know, barbecue restaurants have used the same model for years, especially classic barbecue places. So not having to manage leftovers the next day allows you to start with a clean slate, which is a great thing for operators. Uh, in fact, Adamson's Barbecue in East York, this is the way they approach it. It's a Texas Hill Country style barbecue place uh, right there in, uh, uh, in East York. And again, it's managing um, your operational perspective. Um, if you're if you're cooking what you have, then that helps with ordering and inventory as well. So it's basically, hey, we're going to cook 20 briskets a day, and when they're gone, we're gone, and then you know we'll close our doors. And once we get our customers on board with that uh, idea, then it's like then it's like I know I got to go and get it, or it's gonna I'm gonna miss out, then I'll have mm -hmm. to go again tomorrow, right? So. Um, so also along those lines, so like we're, you know, we're, the changing of the seasons is happening now. So of course, when the temperature drops, although it's been like up and down a lot lately, um, you know, people want things that bring them comfort, whether uh, it's comfort from the inside out with a special dish, whether it's a warm place to go and hang out, or maybe you're just picking up from a warm place these days. Um, but it's those things around that, that you know, helps bring us, you know, satisfaction uh, and such. So if, if as an operator, maybe you've got the best beef stew that no one around you uh, can offer and people know I can only go get it there. And then through social media, if you say, hey, beef stew tomorrow, you know, one to two o'clock and then, you know, when it's gone, it's gone. It drives people um, you know, towards you. So uh, mm -hmm. the other advantage of fewer leftovers um, can also help you leverage your storage space, helps you with labor costs. Um, but of course, if leftovers do style, start to pile up, then um, remember that today's today's leftovers is tomorrow's soup. So, 
Versatility. Um, so as we roll over into versatility, uh, our garlic red skin mashed potatoes. So uh, this could be a meal kit. This could be a, a, a bowl uh, for delivery. It could be in, in restaurants, uh, you know, for on-site dining as well. But, you know, basically potato bowls kind of started you know, picking up momentum a few years ago. And so here we've got a base of our red skin mash. And then we're going to put a southwestern spin on this. So we're going to add some black beans to that. We're going to have nice colors. We're going to have nice, a nice variety of flavors. Some roasted corn that we made in-house. Some shredded pepper jack cheese. So that's going to bring the heat. And some unctuous as well. We've got blistered jalapenos. It's going to be, you know, nice color and an, a really nice visual on there as well. And then a splash of enchilada sauce. And again, this could be a meal kit. This could show up um, chilled. And again, the, you know, the consumer could pop this into uh, the microwave at home. Chef Mark's going to get a close-up photo of that right over there. And then as a, a kind of another spin on those same, um, those same potatoes. So it's like, okay, we're using mashed potatoes, which is, you know, typically a side. We're going to use that uh, as a bowl, as a bowl base, right? So here's an option for uh, a chicken pot pie. So talking about warm and comforting and, you know, bringing you uh, the warm and fuzzies on the inside. Here's a classic chicken pot pie with shiitake mushrooms and such. But instead of putting uh, that typical pastry crust on top, we're actually going to use those mashed potatoes as our topping yeah so now those around at the top yep we're going to pop that into the <laughs> salamander get a little bit of color on that finish off texture and such so chef ron could you pop that into the salamander for us please thank you and then while those are uh while those are under the sally um in terms of one of those things where hey you can only get it here uh versatility number two for the um, the fresh fried potato chips is going to be a peanut butter, vanilla ice cream, caramel potato chip dish. So if you think about sweet, salty, rich, crunchy, all those textures and flavors that come in. So again, we've got our chips that have been held and we cooked those off earlier. I'm gonna put some of those chips in here. Peanut butter is gonna add some unctuousness. It's also gonna add, uh, you know, you can, you can use crunchy peanut butter or smooth peanut butter, but you got nuttiness there as well. This one's one of my favorites. I'm a big salty sweet combo girl. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Whenever I eat something really salty, then I have to go find something sweet to, to follow it up with. So now you get it all in one package. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so again, here's you know something that oh, this is the only place that I can get it. And then we're gonna top that with some caramel sauce. You know, this could certainly get to go item. This could be a food truck item when uh, the weather warms back up again. But talking about texture, flavor, sweet, salty, and again, I can only get it um, here mm -hmm. at one place. That's you know, that's the way to go. So yeah, this one certainly is comforting too for me. I'm a big, you know, I love ice cream. I love the idea of. I don't know. There's just something. Um, it feels like it's a restaurant experience, even though I might have to order it to go or home or whatever. Um, it could be a limited time dessert that you automatically include into your, you know, your uh, big family meal dishes or things like that. So uh, it's yeah. certainly a favorite. So next we wanted to talk about uh, really focusing on cost. Is that right, Summer? Yep, that's right, Chef. Yeah. So. <laughs> We're not going to break any new ground here, probably, but just reminding operators of all the things that that everyone's supposed to be doing all along. And now it's just that we've got such a, a hyper focus on cost, right? How can we control those? How can we manage those? So, you know, food costs and margins are always at the top of what keeps uh, uh, in top of the list of what keeps operators up at night. And now, of course, it's just super critical with delivery costs, all things that are kind of eating into profit margins. Um, last month, Ontario moved uh, to cap third-party delivery fees at 15%, 20% uh, inclusive of all fees um, in regions where indoor dining is banned. So that's helpful to operators, uh, but it still uh, can be a burden to bear. Um, obviously, there's a choice of taking on delivery yourself, if that's something that an operator could manage, especially these days when employees might be looking for extra income or extra hours. 
Um, you might even talk to other operators around and see if this is something where you could kind of band together on. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, you have to consult your uh, insurance uh, carrier, your legal team, and see what the parameters of that might be. But this could be an option uh, that could work for you. I actually have, uh, we have a, a McKenna operator that early on in March decided that he didn't want to switch to um, one of the delivery services and had six restaurants. He had employees that needed to work. So they said, we're going to figure out how to take this, uh, you know, get an app out there and then um, start start delivery. So what turned what what started off as um, a, a, a way to keep his businesses going and his employees, um, you know, on uh, mm -hmm. on the clock, if you will, uh, has now turned into a signature piece of his um, revenue because the next thing that happened was alcohol sales were then allowed. So mm -hmm. he actually um, leased a couple of old, um, uh, you know, like the FedEx trucks, right, the step side vans and turned those into margarita trucks. So he's got six Latin Latin inspired restaurants. So now uh, you could he could deliver alcohol. You could pre-order your alcohol, uh, whether that's, you know, things in bottles or um you know, margaritas and such. So he would set up and you would go as a, you know, as a consumer, go and, and pick up your locations. Then he would t he tacked food onto that as well. So now he's got the food and the alcohol part. Now that's become an additional revenue stream because as their, uh, you know, constraints on, on public gatherings are like up and down, uh, those two margarita trucks are now part of his event uh, schedule. So building, you know, building gatherings and such around those. So something that started off as a necessity, keeping employees, um, you know, going, if you will, has now turned into something that's a permanent piece of the equation. So, um, you know, a really cool idea, again, of operators just reinventing themselves. We mm -hmm. also heard about a, a small town operator where there were no large delivery services in his area. So he started using a taxi service to deliver because his customers still wanted things delivered to their uh, to their homes. So the cool thing is that you know that he knows that the taxi driver is going to show up, uh, which is a common complaint from operators, just the third party drivers just sometimes not showing up. Um, he charges uh, for the meal and then he charges a flat fee for the cost of the taxi and the gratuity. But the taxi and the gratuity are paid for by the customer. And then, the, of course, the overhead and the car and the driver, that's all covered by the uh, taxi company. So he doesn't have to worry about that part. Mm -hmm. um, I also mentioned like kind of working with your neighbors and talking about your neighbors and such. And so as far as other um, operating expenses, are there things that you could talk to the other restaurants on your block or in your neighborhood about? Um, maybe there are a few crew members that want to set up their own little group and provide oil changing services or overnight cleaning services or whatever. So again, you know, talk to your neighbors. We're, we're all in this together and how can we band together as a community to keep mm -hmm. everyone going? Yeah, we um, re chef, I saw that recently in Toronto where uh, a restaurant was working with a barbershop and the barbershop was trying to support the restaurant and they were given a deal to, for a haircut if you came to them and showed them your receipt. But that oh. was such an easy, brilliant way to support mm -hmm. the industry as well as supporting local and all that, right? So mm -hmm. brilliant ideas. Yeah, I was really cool. yeah, I was gonna say this this idea of community, right? We're all kind of banding together, and we're all trying to figure out ways to to support the community without like knowing that we can't really come together as a community, right? And so, thinking about you know even the first part of your delivery, right? Maybe you share um uh, share people, right? And and your um, employees um you know deliver for you know a, the the strip of restaurants that are down there, and you can collaborate on that with your your other um your other fellow restaurateurs. Mm. Um, this could tie into your subscription service that you're doing, right? Where you know if you know what you're you know what you're sending out it's a lot easier for you guys to handle um the amount of of delivery or what that that how that package needs to go out and so again just giving um and marketing it as a community thing right so if i knew that you know where i live here in naperville it's a naperville restaurant drive and and you know i you know can sign up and get you know restaurant um services through throughout the week i would love to support the local markets exactly and I think the other thing too I, I um, really like is um, an idea that I was thinking about just the other day is the whole idea around buying people gifts for Christmas sure. and the holidays for restaurants, yep. right? Like, like they're like I, I I don't know if you need to buy stuff this year. Let's buy food. Let's support the economy. <laughs> Let's buy other I mean, restaurants. 
you know that's true i mean you're truly i mean we were you know we were joking earlier about clothing right and like dressing and like i mean the truth of the matter is is you know we don't need to buy clothing anymore because we're not as you know we're not going in the office and so there's a lot of like less we don't pay as much on gas we don't like do all those things so what are we what do we really need now and, mm -hmm. and most of it i'd say that that food experience and like we have a yeah. unique opportunity in food service to give people the comfort and the joy that that maybe they're looking for i mean look at that it's beautiful and and you feel like hey i could i could do that i could that that makes yep. me feel good so you can see how nicely those come up as a um you know as a topping and as a replacement for that typical pastry crust right so can you hear me okay jay yeah you sound okay. great all right okay so you know along those lines of uh, thinking outside the box or as some people just say think um if you're an operator and let's say you're not you, you don't serve breakfast right it's just lunch and dinner these days um thinking about additional revenue streams trying to maximize what you have for employees and also your physical space so maybe there's a, a budding entrepreneur that wants to start a baking company but they need a commercial space in which to work right so why not rent out your kitchen overnight to them you've got all the equipment um everything that they might need mm -hmm. there and then they can use that you know package everything and then they're back out of the way again before your uh your crew comes in the morning to get ready for uh for lunch service um you know those types of things where again where you're looking at the space that you already have um mm -hmm. it's really just thinking about things in a, in a different manner and you know what what can you provide um you know to your community to your other restaurant partners uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, still thinking about versatility on items, um, taking a bit of a page out of uh, chain accounts, uh, you know, chain restaurants approach to things. A lot of times when they have an LTO with a key item, uh, maybe it's on an entree or a burger or whatever, if they offer that same flavor, those same ingredients, um, as part of a side dish or a starter again you're, you're you're bringing those items already into into the kitchen um a lot of times uh customers are uh okay with maybe spending a little bit of money to try something that's outside their comfort zone rather than mm -hmm. investing heavily into the main item right so uh, an easy way to approach that would be loaded uh, a loaded fry version of uh, of a dish so in this instance, we are using two of our items today, showing versatility. So again, going back to that crispy, uh, spicy potato wedge, and this one's gonna be totally set up for, for off-premise, because I want this to be kind of all ooey gooey at the end when the, the diner cuts into it. Mm -hmm. So we've got our spicy potato wedge there, and then our spinach artichoke dip mixed in with a little crab. So now we've got a crab, spinach artichoke dip uh, on a loaded fry and that's crab crab with a k so certainly <laughs> that's affordable affordable these days but again when this go ahead tommer i was just gonna say the one the thing i love about this one too is not it's not something i would make at home right this is not something yeah, exactly. i would really think about and so to get that and it's you know it's uh, again low low cost high versatility but still great it creates like a an, a unique dining experience that i would expect from a restaurant Exactly. exactly. And and whether you already have both of those items in or all three of those items in, if you have to bring in you know, one component, it's not uh, it's not it's not going to impact uh, heavily uh, the food cost, especially when you can spend versatility uh, in a couple of different directions. So um, back to our uh, fresh, the fresh fried potato chips. Um, another way that we're thinking about using those, and I mentioned this earlier, is seasoning them with a signature seasoning one of the things that that um, the chefs here like to use as our seasoning mix is um, the mccormick montreal steak seasoning the mm -hmm. the challenge with that is that because it is a larger uh there's larger particles there they don't stick very well to the chip so you just have to pop it into the spice grinder or you know mortar and pestle however you want to do that and then just buzz it up just a little bit thank you chef ron so we just want to buzz that a little bit finer so that it will stick onto the chips. And of course, you got to apply that when it's um, when the chips are still a little bit moist, right out of the fryer, or it's just going to bounce off all over the bowl. 
So that that great seasoning blend works really well on this chip. And, mm-hmm. and let me tell you, we've played with a lot of seasoning blends over the years with this one. And so mm-hmm. this is going to be the base of uh, kind of a avant-garde dish um, that I'm calling a cacio e pepe uh, chip. So we've got our pepper here, if you will, and then I'm going to add some grated Parmesan cheese. And again, because those chips are warm, we're going to start to melt some of that cheese. And then we're going to set it up in a to-go container um, with a little bit of uh, Alfredo dip or any type of cheese dip that you might have. Mm -hmm. These chips are great too. I mean, as far as like uh, eating experience, like getting them delivered, I mean, really they, you know, they come to you, they're still crispy, they're, they hold forever. I mean, so it's such a, um, it's, it's really such a great product and eating experience. This is one too, where, you know, you add a couple dollars extra to get it as a side to your burger that you wanted, as opposed to, um, you know, um, just your regular traditional side. So just by adding a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of cheese, you add a, you know, a couple, uh, some incremental dollars to to the offer and um there you go you have a satisfied consumer and you're improving your margins well and the container that i put it into actually has um you know ventable top so you can pop the the um the little i don't know little circles out whatever little vent there and then the you know the chips will be able to vent while they're in that little container but you can certainly separate that out uh if you wanted to like we did with the um with the chips in the bag earlier mm-hmm. so so here's another spin on that same um, on that same chip. So Jay, earlier we were talking about you know items that are residing in the pantry uh, and use them in, you know in different ways, and thinking about costs and so forth and so on. So at, at its heart, that fresh fried potato chip is still a thinly sliced potato. So not thinking of frying it again and turning it into a potato chip as a burger topper or in one of these sides that you know that we've been using it. But here's a a gratin type dish. So just we've just put in uh, Chef Mark actually, you know, layers of those thin sliced chips after they've been slacked out a little bit. Cheese sauce, grated cheese. It goes in. This could be in a cast iron skillet. Here it's in an eighth uh, eighth pan. Could be full size, you know, two inch pans or whatever. But again, is that going to be your your forever way to use that item? Probably not. But in these days, when we're challenged with you know labor, we're challenged with time, we're challenged with uh, you know, slimming down the number of things that are coming in the back door. Here's something that's already prepped, ready to go. I can build this out, layer it, goes into my menu, you know, perfectly. Mm-hmm. And this this type of dish is perfect for uh, for delivery or takeout because it's gonna it's got mass, it's got density, it's gonna stay hot wherever it's gonna go. Could be part of a meal mm-hmm. kit as well. Yeah. But again, how do you you know? Here's here's another way that you can use those chips. So again, one of our favorite things uh, in yeah. the McCain. The cane repertoire, and yeah. then um, really that like one our feels last. like a good holiday thing too, right? Yeah. So a good yeah. fitting into I mean, our holiday season. Well, I think yeah. the stuff before the the thing I like about that product is that it could be a surprise product that goes in your delivery bag, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, in a raw state, like without the cheese and everything else, you can utilize that as chips in the bag. I've seen that recently, to be honest. Now that I think of it. Mm-hmm. Is that it's a very big surprise and what a great thing to get and say thank it you is. for supporting yeah. us. Along with a photo of the people that made your meal and a nice note from the from the kitchen too. So <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's see. So our last item, um oh, there it is, is going to be we're gonna use that spinach artichoke dip again in another way. And here um it, it, this this dish could go, could go a couple of different ways. It could be uh, almost a assemble it yourself, or kind of like a um, deconstructed, um, you know, Middle Eastern type of nachos or chips, if you will. But so we've got some nice pita chips that are here in our to go uh, to go container. So that's going to be part of your uh, part of your kit, and then some of um, some of the spinach artichoke dip here in roasted tomatoes. So we roasted these tomatoes earlier, and then we're just going to fill those in, like right on the pickup. This could be a side dish in the restaurant here. I think it's great. Again, this is something that would travel. Um, it's not going to be something that you're uh, that you're probably expecting. And then you could certainly take this take this out, pull it apart, turn it into a topping for those chips, or you can use the chips and kind of you know eat it um, as you know dipping out of the tomatoes, and then use the tomatoes there at the end. So. 
you know what's cool about that too, Chef? <laughs> I hate to say is, but I don't really mean to hate it, but I just love the idea. I hate the fact that we can't see it on a plate in a lot of locations. I have to have yeah. the takeout yeah. because that would be so beautiful. Yeah. On sure. a plate. And what a great product. Because a lot of people will put like, you know, always there's starch and then there's your veg and your protein. But what a great thing to put on there that really is different and something unique and mm -hmm. love it. Love it. Beautiful though. Well, I, I saw a posting on um, from the from my culinary school alma mater a few weeks ago, and the students are back there, and they're back in session, and, and it was, you know, the comment was like, who who knew that um, attractive plating and to-go containers was going to be the trend of... Exactly. <laughs> right. Very good point. It's, it's certainly true. It's something that we haven't, like before, we didn't even think about, you know, you got your styrofoam container, you ate out of the container and all that kind of stuff. But I will say, and, you know, um, and maybe this is just kind of foodie friends and things like that. But um, I think people are starting to actually start to plate, right? Like pull it out of the plastic, put it onto my plate so I can yep. like at least feel normal. Like I can feel like I'm not you know, using plasticware and plastic containers. Now I will say if I look at a container and it comes through and I'm like, that's good packaging. So you yep. start to think about those things that you didn't care about before. And now, um, so something to consider as a, as an overall operator, like what does plating look like, um, you know, in, in plastic. <laughs> so. Very, very good point. Very good point. So Summer, um, I know you've got a few more things uh, yeah. uh, to help, you know, encourage operators to expand their horizons. So I'll, sure. I'll kick it back over to you. Yeah, sure. So um, this is another just quick way to think about how you can promote your your menu offering. Um, and so a lot of the times we're thinking about our direct consumer, but but really um, we're sharing with you some ideas about exploring alternate avenues to showcase your menu. And so um, across the country, and I think this comes to the community aspect of it, supermarket retailers are actually helping food service operators to remain afloat by offering um, pre-packaged meal kits things like that. And so um, one example is Loblaws um, is offering 15 recipes available from Toronto favorites such as Burgers Priest, La Carnita, Fresh, and there's several more. And I think there's like 10 or so different restaurants. Um, the kits are actually prepared by the restaurant um, with fresh ingredients and then given um, assembly instructions or cooking instructions that go along with them. And then um, they feature them next to the PC Chef meal kits. So, so it's an alternative way for you guys to think about how um, you might sell your family meal kits or some of your signature menu items um, in a way that's successful. And this really helps the grocery store gain a competitive advantage and with recent restaurant style offerings that, you know, that consumers are looking for and consumers are craving, but it also helps the operator gain exposure to maybe a different consumer set. And so it's an opportunity to really capitalize on, on the growth we're seeing in um, retail food service. Um, so, so certainly an option there to think with your local grocery store where maybe you might be able to feature, be featured um, on, in some of those um, cases. On the opposite side, um, there are several restaurants that are actually selling groceries. Um, so, so one example is Toronto's Montgomery's restaurant. So they're getting in the grocery business. They basically are providing everything from pantry staples to, you know, uh, you know, meal kits as far as like for, for easy assembly, fresh produce, maybe it's a fully planned meal. Um, but essentially thinking about how you might sell your groceries. So one example actually that I heard from my friend Robin here is that there's a restaurant that's actually selling frozen french fries as an add-on to their um to their menu so if you order a, a meal for me for delivery or whatnot um if you want i will throw in an extra set of frozen french fries and frozen chicken tenders that you can heat in the oven so again it's like a grocery style um sale um not prepared but certainly easy and effective for um your your consumers um creating a convenience and an offering that you know maybe they wouldn't have otherwise experienced so and, and summer just on that cisco's helped i think we've opened nineteen thousand of those in the u.s market with our customers Excellent. so sure. people that are watching this if you need help on that we call them pop-up stores yeah um, and we've got pop-up plus stores where you don't have to invest in inventory like a grocery <laughs> store it's on order uh, That's awesome. so you order what you get um, and, and it's allowing a lot of these smaller stores or restaurants to give 
the local areas something different that they maybe would see in a grocery store. So yeah. great products, and they're using social media oh. to get their words out about their yeah. products that they're and offering in a pop-up style grocery store. Yeah. And it's huge. It's really it's cool. huge. And we yeah. just love the fact. And we have all the tools and resources to make it happen. That's great. In each restaurant and customer we have. Well, and, and, you know, in a time where um, food safety is a huge deal, right? Like we're really con conscientious of it. Um, things like hot bars and stuff that we would normally see in say a whole, like a Whole Foods or a grocery, grocery store mm -hmm. or, or things like that are not really pre prevalent now or like starting to diminish because people don't want to be sharing food, right? Or getting that close to each other on that. And so, so on top of the, the grocery aspect of it, being able to sell groceries and working with, you know, Cisco to be able to do that, um, um, you know, giving that extra, you know, offering to where I can still get my prepared meal, meal as a consumer, but maybe in a different way and in a more individualized way. I mean, you help the grocery store as well as making sure that, you know, you keep your guys as a float. And, and what we were talking about earlier about Chef Brooks saying like those dark hours of your kitchen, maybe that's when you use, use the time to assemble those kinds of things, um, put your packages together, um, help have your, um, have your teams um, be able to do that. Cool. Awesome. Awesome ideas. So many. <laughs> so many. So many yeah, ideas. we're happy to do it. And ultimately, I mean, for us, you know, reach out to your McCain sales rep. I mean, we're we're here. We're we're still um our your local contact. Um, we can help with any business needs. I'm sure as, as Cisco can. I will say, um, we still have teams that are making um personal calls if they need to. So for samples and things like that, um, we're certainly happy to help anybody in that way. And then um, we can also schedule any um virtual or live meetings. However, whatever works for anybody to to try to help implement some of these ideas. Awesome stuff, Summer. Chef, last words. You always have great last words. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, to Summer's point there, so we've actually kind of leveraged the platform that you've uh, that you've set here, and we've actually had some virtual customer product presentations and product reviews where you know we'll send things to the customer. They're cooking it up at their site. We're cooking it up in our kitchen. You know, it's all linked through um, you know whatever platform. Mm -hmm. we're for everyone and you know, people are responding to that really well there's always a couple of glitches but everyone's used to that these days um you know and of course someone's dog or child always comes in as well but, um, you know, people are responding really well to because uh, we still want to stay connected and we still got to move our businesses forward so this is the way to do it well appreciate all the help great ideas chef again and uh thanks again for everyone that tuned in today was able to watch and enjoy some great ideas actually a lot of great ideas um, from both of you. And I just can't thank you enough for being a part yeah. of our show today. Happy to do it. Great. Thanks, Ann. Happy holidays. Yeah, Hi, happy everyone. holidays to you as well. And for everyone else, guess what? We got next week. We're coming back next week with a show called The Cisco Difference. So you want to know what's different about Cisco? Guess what? We're going behind the scenes, and we're going to show you what makes us different and what makes us super awesome. So we got that coming up on Tuesday. 11 a.m. Eastern time. Plus on Thursday next week, we have celebrity chef Andrea. Oh my God, I forget her last name. Andrea, <laughs> she's, oh, that's so bad. Um, but <laughs> Andrea Nicholson's going to be in the house and we're going to be actually broadcasting from her amazing restaurant, which is in Toronto. And we're going to hear her story and the great ideas she's doing with sous vide from Cardinal Meads. So we're super happy to have her on our show to finish off this year. And then next year, we have so many shows lined up. It is absolutely crazy, but we're super happy to have everyone in. So thanks again, McCain's. You guys absolutely rule. Thanks again for all the great ideas. And for everyone else, stay safe, support our industry. If you can't go dine out, do takeout and get out there sure. and uh, let's support it. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.